So the title of our talk today is Are Humans Designed to Eat Meat? Well, let's start off by talking about body plans. When you look at feeding strategies and energy, and energy efficiency, what you notice, first of all, is that carnivores are designed or optimized for predation. That is, they are designed to chase things down and kill it so that they can eat it. Because you see, when a wolf gets ready to have dinner, it has a very different problem from when an antelope gets ready to have dinner. When the wolf gets ready to have dinner, it's trying to eat something that doesn't want to be eating, eaten. And it's trying to eat something that has legs and that tip, typically tends to run away. You know, it's like, get away from me, wolf. Whereas the antelope, the, the stuff that it eats is rooted to the ground, so it tends not, it doesn't tend to go anywhere, so it doesn't have to chase its food. So as a result, carnivores, like wolves, are optimized for predation, for chasing things down, killing it without being severely injured so that they can live and eat another day. But herbivores, like the antelope, are optimized for foraging because Whereas their food, which, is, which are plants, are anchored to the ground, they tend to be spread out all over the place. So as a result, they've got to cover a lot of area to find enough food to give them the energy they need to live, eat, and raise their young. So they are optimized for efficiently covering large amounts of territory at a minimal energy expenditure. All animals have to procure their diets in an energy efficient fashion. Because obviously, if you expend more energy looking for your food than you get from your food, you ultimately will not be around for a very long time. So as a result, carnivores seek weak, diseased, or defective, that is, stupid animals, because they are easier to catch. So you see, when, you're, when your wolf goes out or your lion goes out on the savannah looking for something to eat, they don't look for the biggest, baddest antelope on the block. They look for the one that's limping or lame or old or, you know, sitting around going do 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 Everybody else is running and the, and the stupid ones are still eating like, hey, I got more food for myself. You know, and as a result, they end up weeding out the sick, diseased, old, and lame which is very beneficial for the gene pool of the antelope because they don't really need those kind of stupid people. You know, I was, one, I, was, I was working in the emergency room one night and um, we had a guy who came in because, and I'm telling you, this is like about 11.30 at night and it was during the winter time when the days were short, he had fallen off his roof. You wanna know why? Because he was up there fixing the roof and drinking beer. <laughs> you know, and I said to the, to the ER doc, I'm like, wait a minute now, before we rush in there and fix this guy, do we really, do we really want those genes in the pool? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, if this guy didn't have enough sense not to try and fix his roof in the middle of the night and drink beer, do we really need those kind of genes hanging around? But anyway, herbivores, by contrast, they look for plant foods that are lush, verdant, beautiful because those plants are what? The most nutritious. So they don't want the old scraggly, burned up, dried out grass. They want the grass or the, the leaves that are fresh and lush and verdant because those are the ones that are going to contain the most nutrients. So in a sense, they look for the most beautiful plants because those are the ones with the best nutrition. Well, what's interesting about that is that if you are a predator who uses an herbivore mentality. That is, instead of going out looking for the weak, diseased, and lame, you end up go, you go out looking for the stuff that's the biggest, the brightest, and the best. You actually end up destroying the species that you're preying on. Think about that. Because what do we look for? Do we look for things that are diseased and sick and full of cancer? No, we want the buck that has, you know, 15 prongs prongs on his antlers. We want the biggest thing that's, that's, that's uh, uh, in nature. And as a result, we end up driving species towards extinction. But that's because we are using an herbivore mentality. Well, 
When you look at your typical carnivore, like my friend the wolf here, first thing you notice is that they are as what I call torpedo shaped. That is, they're streamlined so that in a sort of front to back fashion so that they can run very fast and chase down whatever it is they're trying to catch. Secondly, they have what I refer to as an armored front. Now, you know, when they run up and try to catch animals, these animals usually start trying to kick the crap out of them. And so as a result, they typically have a heavily padded uh, shoulders, their chest cavity is protected, their organs in their chest cavity is protected by the rib cage. The most vulnerable parts of these animals, the unprotected abdomen and the gonads, are way at the back, the furthest away from where the action is, so that they will be the least likely to be injured. They obviously have a thick, muscular, sturdy neck so that they can grab onto something and, you know, shake it and rustle it and bring it down to the ground without uh, getting whiplash or, you know, breaking their neck. Um, they have forward deployed weapons. Anybody that's looked into the face of a snarling dog knows exactly what that means. Those teeth that are designed to slash and, and cut and grab and the claws are all up front so that they can do what they need to do to bring down their prey with a minimal of energy expenditure. Their top speed is usually somewhere around, with the exception of the cheetah, which is a special case, around 35 miles an hour. That enables them to ambush uh, or capture sick, injured, or unwary prey. And they have what is referred to as a digitigrade stance. What that means is that they are standing on their toes, okay? So that they are permanently ready to run. You see, like, you or I, if we get ready, if I challenge this young lady right here in the front row to a race, we have to get up on our toes to run. They're already on their toes. They're always ready to run. Uh, and the other thing that a digital grade stance does is it also, it increases stride length. Speed is basically stride length per unit time.